エレンどうして泣いてるのこの世から生き残らぜねえエレンあれ僕たちもいつか外の世界を探検できるといいね全部俺に飛ばせしろ何を考えてるんだ俺は本当におかしくなっちまったのかこの映画は、このような映画を見つけたら、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、One more for the road. I have a mess of thoughts and feelings that I'm gonna try and lay out coherently as best I can. What did I think of the ending? Was I satisfied? What kind of legacy did Attack on Titan leave? All of that coming up after I talk about today's sponsor. Ark Knights. Oh god, I'm gonna fall back into Ark Knights again, aren't I? Ark Knights is a strategic RPG with an immersive story set within the fictional universe of Terra. You have the role of the Doctor in this world, where the Oreopathy disease poses the utmost menace, and it's up to you to command several operators to fight against the antagonists on their journey to discover a remedy for the ailment. Yes, if you didn't know me, and the boys were addicted to Ark Knights for a while, but now Ark Knights is bringing the Lone Trail story, running from November 7th to December 5th. In this brand new side story event, as the Ark Zero project is nearing its conclusion, Director Kirsten Wright vanishes. Along with the equipment and technical staff, the Rhodes Island team, while working to thwart the military attacks on the Ryan Lab, is simultaneously searching for the whereabouts of the director. Joining us on the journey are four new operators. We have Musis, an eccentric ecologist; Holiak, a core caster with the ability to make targets levitate; Silence, the paradigmatic, a healer whose talent applies sanctuary within an attack range; and Melanite, who serves as a head shooter, which is exactly as it sounds, with her revolutionary armament being able to dish out massive damage. During the event, doctors have the opportunity to earn rewards by participating in the relevant. Tasks and through the event store. Just to note that the special case contact C U D O D store will only be open for a limited time. And not forgetting, there are seven new skins with thirteen returning skins. Woo! Can't wait for the Bloodline skins myself. So, what are you waiting for? Ark Knights is available on iOS and Android right now, and you can download it today by clicking that link in the description. It's been a while since I talked about Attack on Titan, so much so people were starting to believe that I just fallen out of interest with it. But the truth is, I just didn't have that much new to add. The final season continued being hype, continued delivering on its. Complex political drama. Did anything big happen since the last time I talked about it? Oh yeah. The end of the world. The big thing was, of course, Eren initiating the rumbling, which was a plot development I had no idea was coming. Nah, -uh. no way any of us could have predicted this was actually going to happen. This was our red wedding, our Thanos snap, a world-shaking fictional event that I believe will remain as a pop culture reference for years to come. And it's an event like this that exemplified what Attack on Titan does best. When you hear about a disaster, it's sometimes hard to rationalize in your mind. One person dying is a tragedy. A million people dying is a statistic. And the one amazing thing about the rumbling is it truly. Really makes you feel the gravity of what that statistic actually means. This isn't just a percentage or a number on a page. These are people. 
individual people fighting tooth and nail in a situation that is so far beyond saving. The true weight of Eren's decision is laid bare in front of you. Here is humanity at their darkest point, yet somehow, through the cruelty, you see glimpses of hope that shine through just the rawest moments of human nature and emotions. This is just fucking beautiful. One of my favourite episodes is the one where the characters we've grown to know on every side are just sitting in the circle discussing their next plans. No action, no big developments, just a group of people talking, trying to rationalise together an almost hopeless situation. Words are exchanged, emotions run high, you get to see the raw side of these characters being put in a position they'd never thought they'd be in, and you're just sitting there going, Ooh! That's some spicy tea! It takes a special show to be able to just put some people in a room, let that scene play out, and have that be as gripping as seeing two Goliath beings locking fists. This, to simply put, it's just compelling television. The legacy the show had built was one that was not afraid to take risks, not afraid to break the mould, evolve, change up the entire reason you began watching in the first place, leading to some of the most gripping moments you can find in entertainment. How do you even begin to go about concluding all these characters, all these plot threads, 10 years worth of build up? Would it rise up to meet the colossal weight of expectations it had, or would it lose it all, slip and fall? <laughs> Why'd I put that in the script? So someone used my email and emailed Studio Wit. Hello, I am anime reviewer Gigak. <laughs> I will make a request of you. Many people want Eren and Mikasa to have a relationship. <laughs> Eren x Mikasa. I think no if way. this happens, many people will enjoy the anime more. <laughs> the prophecy is true. So this is it. The ending. If I had to pick a single word to describe my emotions after the ending, it would be satisfied. Coming into this, manga readers had me believing that Game of Thrones Season 8 was about to get a new sibling. But instead, what I saw was an imperfect, sometimes a little messy, but ultimately a fitting conclusion to a series that had already achieved so much over the years. For a series that took so many risks, I'm sure there were some people that were disappointed that everything ended in a pretty safe manner. Nothing too overly sad, nothing too overly happy, nothing really fell out of my realm of expectations, and to me that was completely fine. There's already a million different opinions on every single little detail, every scene, every line, who should have died, who should have lived, but pretty much my only issues boil down to things revolving around the Titan lore and this single scene. Oh, oh no. Please, I can't do this again, no! One of the big question marks I had was where was Eren ultimately going with all this? What were the consequences going to be for initiating the rumbling? What was Eren able to achieve by massacring millions if not billions of people? <laughs> I don't know. Seems legit. It's revealed that Eren didn't really know what know he was what doing. doing. He was just an idiot who fell into power and got lost along the way. Ah yes, another classic example of men who'd rather commit genocide, risk his friends dying, ensure the death of his own mother than seek a therapist. For real though, I actually really liked this idea that Eren was at heart the same angry, emotional kid we saw at the beginning. From the get-go, we see Eren as a person who tried to solve all his problems through impulse and rage, and as he got older, learned more about the world, learns that human conflict is way more complex and nuanced than he ever imagined it to be while obtaining the power to make a real change. The only solution he could come up with was the only solution he ever knew. Kill. Kill Titans. Kill humans. Kill everyone that got in the way of his freedom, when, in the end, it was that very freedom that had enslaved him. The biggest trick Eren pulled on his friends, on the world, on us, was convincing us that he was him. He tried to be Lelouch and realized too late, You're not that guy, pal, trust me. I freaking love this idea and it felt like such a fitting conclusion for the character. Where this got a bit messy is when you throw this in with all the titan timey-wimey bullshit. See, he wanted his friends to become the heroes by slaying him, but also he was gonna wipe out 100% of humanity anyway if given the chance. So he's a psychotic idiot. Oh, but wait, his mind's a mess because he sees the past, present and future simultaneously. This was a predetermined timeline where he actually initiated the death of his mom. Titan power mechanics, the paths, coordinates, these shines through when they are used to put characters in difficult situations with tough choices to make. The stakes are high and the consequences are always clear. But I came out of this conversation not exactly knowing what choices Eren had to make. Was this the only timeline he was tragically forced to enact? Was the rumbling a decision he made based on different futures he saw? Was he trying to set up a Code Geass ending for his friends? Was this all a facade and he had no idea what he was doing? Was it all of the above? What could have been something clear and concise felt a bit jumbled up and I thought by just having a few more scenes to really give a glimpse into what was really going on in his head, it could have saved a lot of confusion. Oh, he just got called cringe by Armin! Armin, it's over! And this is pretty much my sentiment for every other big reveal in the final conversation. Turns out, Eren and Mikasa had feelings for each other the entire time instead of having some sibling-type relationship. 
Oh, and so did Ymir, who actually loved King Fritz, the person that burned down her homeland, murdered her parents, and tore out her tongue. That was the thing that bound her for 2,000 years. She was just looking for someone to break her out of her shackles of love, and that real special chosen person was actually Mikasa. Why? So the one thing that consistently blew my mind watching Attack on Titan is that no matter how crazy the plot got, it always felt so natural. Every major development was meticulously crafted, every twist carefully planned out and foreshadowed. Compared to that, a lot of this felt like we were throwing this out of left field. Eren and Mikasa having feelings for each other, Ymir having some twisted love for her king, Mikasa being her chosen one. All of these are interesting ideas that I kind of see what the intention is, and I guess it kind of makes sense, but for the very first time, I didn't feel that same airtight execution as everything that came before it, especially since it took the true ship that was foreshadowed this entire time. Alright, rant over. I realise that I've just spent the last few minutes nitpicking details, but I hope you understand that this is only compared to the insanely high standards the series had set itself previously. With a show that juggled so many moving parts, characters, geopolitics, time travel, titan lore mechanics, if my only complaints is a messy execution on a few aspects in the final scene, it in no way hampers the show's accomplishments, and all I really wanted anyway was for it to nail its final message, which it did. I'd said before that with everything the series had done, all it needed to do was land on two feet, and while I don't think we got that perfect 10 out of 10 landing, to me, this more felt like... Oh, okay. Impressive. Impressive. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, is it going to fumble? Oh. Oh. Oh! Alright, we take those! We got the short-term happiness that Eren yearned for. The people he loved got to live out the long, peaceful lives they deserved. Everyone we care about got the send-offs they so rightfully earned. But it was only a matter of time before the peace they fought so hard for ended, war breaks out, and the cycle begins anew. It showed us no matter how hard one person tries, no matter what change you enact, conflict is inevitable, and humanity is doomed to repeat itself. Who won? Who lost? Everyone won and everyone lost. And to me, that felt like a cruel but poetic ending to the unforgivingly harsh world Attack on Titan presented us with. But you know what? Even though on paper this is technically a really grim ending, it didn't make me feel hopeless. Like the characters, we know the harsh reality of the world. This was a series that was unforgiving to every person in it, that was willing to put its characters through unimaginable suffering and pain, placed them in a living hell. Yet, despite this, they struggled on anyway. Why? Because no matter how bleak, no matter how dark, there is still a willingness to hope for a better tomorrow while acknowledging the harsh truths of today. That's what Attack on Titan meant to me. It might not be the greatest ending of all time, but it is, to me, the fitting ending to one of the greatest stories we've seen in anime. This was a tale that has given me every emotion under the sun, a story that has shocked me, touched me, inspired me in a way few pieces of art ever could, and I don't doubt that it will be a long time before we see a series like this come around again. This wasn't just a show that blew up in the anime community, this was a show that grew up with the anime community, a show that blasted past the reach of what we thought anime was capable of, and showed the world just how great this medium could be. Some of us discovered anime because of this show, some of us fell back in love with anime because of this show, some of us will never forget anime because of this show. Years from now, when you're reminiscing about that time, every convention was filled with Survey Corps uniforms, having a knee-jerk reaction to someone shouting Sasageyo, the emotional rush of hearing Irwin's last speech, the collective shock of seeing the rumbling being initiated, and some person goes, I don't get it. There's only one reply you can say. You just had to be there. This is what it means to be a generation-defining show. This wasn't just the end of another anime. This was the end of an era.